Now for the x value, we have x minus what would give me the expression x plus 6. So I'd have to subtract a negative 6 in order to get the expression x plus 6 because two negatives makes a positive. Part B of example 3. Again, all we're doing here is we're just analyzing what the slope and the point would be. Keeping in mind our form, the slope would be this number right here, the negative 1 half. And the point must always be in the form x comma y. So my x1 is going to go right here, my y1 here. The y value will be y minus y1. So I'm subtracting a positive 3. And x minus a positive 2. So 2 would go here. Being able to analyze this information just given the equation will help you when it comes to graphing. So just like with before in the other form, I do have the list of steps listed above example 4 for graphing. That can help you on your homework. Um, but for now, I'm just going to talk you through it. So the first thing I want to do is basically do what we did in example 3. Just look at the equation and write down the information. So looking at this equation, I can see that my slope is a negative 3 and a point that lies on the graph, again, being in form x1 comma y1, it's going to be y minus a negative 4, so negative 4 would go here, and x minus a negative 2, so negative 2 would be right here. Once I have this information, I can go ahead and um, begin plotting that information onto my coordinate plane. So once again, to draw any linear function, all you really need are two points. I already have one point right here. Negative 2, negative 4. To get my second point, I can use the slope. So my slope is negative 3. If I wanted to, I could rewrite it as negative 3 over 1, just because it helps me keep in mind that we are using rise over run. So my rise would be moving down 3. My run would be moving right 1. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Starting from my point, negative 2, negative 4, I'm going to move down 3 and right 1. I'm just going to make a note, and you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I could have also moved using the negative associated with the denominator. So I could have also moved up 3 and left 1 if I really, really wanted to, but I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and just connect the points and draw a linear function. Part B. If you feel comfortable enough attempting this on your own, you go for it. Um, for those of you who are still struggling a little bit, uh, go ahead and follow along. Once again with graphing, I'm going to analyze my information first. Looking at this, I can see my slope is a negative 5 halves, and my point will be 3 negative 4. My point is 3, negative 4. Because here's my y1. So y minus a negative 4 would give me y plus 4. And then here's my x1. x minus a positive 3 would give me the expression x minus 3. I'm going to plot my point 3, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. There's my first point. All you need is a second point. To get that point, you're going to use your slope. The slope is negative 5, 2. I'm going to move down 5 and right 2 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, one, two. Here's my second point. I could have also moved up five and left two if I wanted to, but I'm not going to for now. Just connect your points, and there's my linear function. Examples five and six are taking a look at standard form. Now, in algebra two, normally when I give you something in standard form, we go ahead and we convert it. So I might take a look at this and say, hey, instead of me having to go through all the work and solve for standard form, let me just rewrite it into slope intercept form. So I could subtract my two X over to the other side and to get y by itself, I would divide each side by four. Um, but let's go ahead and look at how we would solve using standard form for now. Okay. Uh, when we're taking a look at standard form, you actually have to identify the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Let's start off finding the y-intercepts. In order to find the y-intercept, we'd have to solve for y. Essentially, we'd have to let x equal 0. If I let x equal 0, well, I'm going to go ahead and substitute in my 0 for x, giving me 2 times 0 plus 4y equals 8. Well, 2 times 0 is just 0, so that's gone. And now I just have 4y equals 8. To get y by itself, we just divide each side by 4, giving me y equals 2. So I have the point 0, 2, because remember it's x comma y. 0 was x and 2 is y. And now I need to find my x-intercept. Well, if to find the y-intercept, I had to let x equal 0, then to find the x-intercept, I have to let y equal 0. Let's go ahead and substitute in 0 for y. That would give me 2x plus 4 times 0 equals 8. Well, 4 times 0 is 0, so that's basically gone. Uh, 2x equals 8 to solve for x, just divide by 2. I get x equals 4. So that means my second point, or my x-intercept, is going to be 4 comma 0, because 4 was x, 0 was my y. Let's see what that would look like graphing. For now, I'm just going to skip part B here, because, you know, I we really will just rewrite it in the future, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, for graphing, I think it would be easier if I just went ahead and solved for part B. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, looking at part B of example 6, the first step I want to do in graphing is analyze the equation. Okay, well this is standard form, and we just went over that when in standard form, we need to find the x and y intercepts. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for my y-intercepts just like last time. So I'm going to let x equal 0 in order to solve for this. 7 times 0 minus 4y equals 28. Well, 7 times 0 is 0, so I'm left with a negative 4y equals 28. To get y by itself, I have to divide each side by negative 4, and that would give me y equals negative 7, which means that one of my points is going to be 0, because that's the x value, negative 7. Okay, let's push this over so you can see my work. Now I need to find the x-intercept, and in order to do this, I have to let y equal 0 which means I'm going to have 7x minus 4 times 0 equals 28. All right, well, 4 times 0 is 0, so that's gone. I'm left with 7x equals 28. Divide each side by 7. Get x equals 4. 
So the second point I have, my x-intercept, has an x value of 4 and a y value of 0. All right, well, to graph any linear function, all we need are two points. We have that. 0, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's right here. And 4, 0 is 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. All we have to do at this point is connect the dots. There's my linear function.